Hi there and welcome to 100 Days of Discipleship with Apostle Emmanuel Liren. These 100 days are tailor-made to take you on a discipleship journey. And let me say this, all 100 days are put on. And so if you don't follow through to the end, you cannot say categorically that you went through the training. I said that to say this, so be consistent because consistency is part of the training. So I encourage you to continue until the end. You see, don't forget what I, I taught in, I think, the first class. It's when it, when it comes to habits formation, it is expected that as time goes on, or your commitment is going to begin to win. So you need to put structures in place to make sure that that doesn't happen. Set alarms. Get friends and colleagues whom you'll be accountable. Get ready because we're in for a ride. I'm going to read something to you, a text that I'm sure you've heard before. But um, there's something I want to emphasize and crystallize here. In Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It says that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of, of your mind. There's a lot to say about this, but I, I just want to draw this here and say this. As a Christian, you must have a Christian worldview. You see, um, the first person I heard put it this exact way, I, um, I was in the U.S. and I was talking to a pastor about how a lot of Christians are not influenced by the Bible culture. And I like the phraseology that he used, that as a Christian, you must have a Christian worldview. A lot of people already have a culture. Some people who go to church, they leave the hip-hop culture for reasons, you know. I mean, there's gospel hip-hop now, you know, and all of that. But generally, the hip-hop culture, it's how they dress, it's how they talk, the slangs that they use, and they just happen to go to church. And for a lot of people, um, they, they just take on some culture in the world, some culture preference in the world, and sprinkle religion around it. But this is the word of the Lord, that you are not conformed to this world, but you are transformed by the renewing of your mind. And I'm here to tell you this. When we talk about 100 days of discipleship, understand that there is no disciple without a discipline. That's literally what discipleship means. And you see, um, just like many words have different nuances, uh, this word has at least two meanings. Uh, the word discipline. And let me just read them to you. The first definition of the word discipline is training to act according to... Now that's interesting. Training to act according to rules, like... A military drill, all right? Um, and then another is a branch of instruction or learning. So he has a discipline in history. And the two of them apply. You see, because when you talk about discipline in, in terms of drills and learning to walk according to some set of rules, understand this. Jesus said, if anyone will be my disciple, he must take up his cross. Mark chapter 8. He must take up his cross and come after me. So it means that there is a discipline. For instance, committing to 100 days of discipleship is a discipline. It's going to take discipline. It's going to require some sacrifice for, from you. It means that many times in following Jesus, it will not be as convenient. It will be as commanded. I got that uh, phrase from Bishop Oedipo. Not as convenient, but as commanded. If God says go, you go. If God says stop, you stop. If God says start, you start. No ifs, no buts, no maybes. And this is something you have to understand. So you see, when you begin to put some structure in your life based on the authority of the word of God, you know that you are growing in discipleship. You cannot just continue this laser fair, idiocre approach to Christianity and claim to be a disciple. You go to church when you want. You give when it's convenient. You pray when it's convenient. You must put structure in your life. All right? And then the second thing which I actually wanted to dwell on is this. You are not a disciple without a discipline. So when someone says, I studied engineering, all right, that's his discipline. It means that there is a set of rules that influences his modus operandi, all right? So listen, what I'm actually talking about today is the final authority of the scriptures. To be a disciple, you must have a discipline. And your discipline is the word of God. The final authority of the word of God. You must agree that the word of God is 
final authority. It must become your worldview, not just something that you refer to once in a while, something that you believe when it's convenient. You must believe in the sufficiency and the final authority of the scriptures to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. That's important. That's important. So for instance, there are trending perspectives about marriage, about sex, about dressing, about culture. Don't have a worldly culture and be a churchgoer. You are a disciple when you begin to adhere to the discipline of the word of God. You must embrace it as final authority, all right? What God's word says is final and it becomes your worldview. That is what influences what you do in certain situations. That is what influences how you treat people, how you interact with the world. It's the lens with which you see the world. That's how to be a disciple. You see, Paul said, to, said this to the church at Thessalonica. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13, he says, For this reason, we also thank God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God. This is important. So even when you're reading the Bible, there is a disposition, there is a receptiveness, a requisite receptiveness. You don't, he said, you don't receive it like it's just the words of a mere man. But as though it is in truth, the word of God. And so you become a doer of the word of God. All right? And let me explain this to you. When you embrace the word of God, you must embrace it like a seesaw relationship. Have you ever been on the seesaw, that swing? Some of you, um, maybe in your primary school, you had a playground that had a seesaw. And when one side is up, the other side is down. For the word of God to be elevated in your life, all that contrary views must be demoted. They cannot both hold sway. So, you see, that application of the seesaw must be with regards to the opinion of men vis-a-vis -vis the word of God in your heart. When you elevate the word of God in your heart, you know what the Bible says? It says, let God be true and all men lies. The final authority of the word of God. Listen, when it comes to, you know, um, engineering, science, and all of that, things that are not bearing on um, the interaction of the world, and salvation, then of course, the textbooks um, hold sway. But when it comes to your worldview, he says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Let me tell you something. The devil doesn't mind that you're a churchgoer. He doesn't mind. He doesn't mind. He wants you to be ineffective in your discipline. As long as he can get you to be, the reason this is important is because there are a lot of churchgoers who are conformed to this world. There is nothing that reeks of discipleship in them. You can't pick it in their conversation, in their manner of life, in their discipline, in their consecration. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing marks them apart as disciples. And for that to change, there must be sacrifice and then there must be the worldview, a worldview change. I hope this helped you. Listen, wherever you are, just say, I'm a doer of the word and not a hearer alone. All right? And I adhere to the discipline of God's word. See, let me just say this. Let me give you a simple assignment. Start building convictions, especially in key aspects of your life. What are your convictions regarding money? What are your convictions regarding sexual discipline? What are your convictions regarding spiritual devotion? Do you pray every day? If yes, when? How? For how long? Structure, all right? If you just listen to this and say, well, that was powerful, okay? You know, if you don't structure to it, you're not doing it, all right? Take up your cross. When Jesus says, take up your cross, that's a conscious act. Something you do deliberately. All right? Um, and then adhere. So when you hear any contrary 
opinion in culture, on social media, it is contrary to the word of God, no matter how popular it is, side with the word of God. Because you're a disciple. You're a disciple. You have a discipline. And let me tell you this. Others should respect that you have a discipline. They may, they may choose not to, but boldly demand it. I'm a Christian. No, I can't do that. It doesn't align with my convictions. Doesn't I don't see the world that way. All right. Put it out there and be bold about that. Because there's no other way to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. I'm sure this blessed you. This blessed you. And you have not subscribed to this YouTube channel. Go ahead and do it. And then send it to someone that you love. Tell them we're going 100 days of discipleship. And our profiting is appearing to all. See, share update. Tell them. Don't let them say, ah, you know, share updates with us now. Bros, you know. <laughs> Tell them I'm growing and I want you to grow with me. All right. Um, and then liking this video and commenting will help the YouTube algorithm. God bless you and see you 